It's often said, isn't it, that the liberal left is conspicuously silent when it comes to radical Islam. But in my experience, that's not entirely true. Many of them are very quick to label anyone who advocates freedom over theocracy as a racist and an Islamophobe. Indeed, after my last video where I suggested that we should ban the misogynistic and fascist device known as the burqa, I received quite a lot of very angry emails from members of the multicultural appeasement lobby, the kind of people who put their own mothers and daughters in burqas to avoid being called intolerant, and who occupy such high moral ground that you can hardly see them up there through the clouds of self-righteousness. I'm talking about members of the enlightened liberal intelligentsia that has consistently shown itself to be anything but enlightened or liberal or intelligent, mainly because it's motivated more by a deep irrational hatred of America than by any real notion of justice or respect, and whose politically correct double standards and cringeworthy cowardice in the face of aggressive Islamism has led many liberal-minded people to actively despise the word liberal. You people have certainly reminded me, as if I needed reminding, why my political views have changed in recent years. You see, foolishly perhaps, I used to take freedom for granted. But now, thanks to ultra-tolerant, self-hating, multicultural lemmings like you, I don't. Politically, I used to always be on the liberal left, because I used to believe in things like social justice, tolerance, respect, you know, the good things in life. I still believe in those things, which is why I'm no longer on the liberal left. Because I believe that in aligning itself as it has so completely with the fascism of Islam and in colluding with an ideology that wants to victimise minorities and kill people for their lifestyle, the liberal left has lost its way, lost its moral authority and become a threat to our freedom. The medicine has become the disease. And I don't want to be contaminated, so where does that leave me now, politically? Does it leave me on the right? No, because that's the last place I want to be, so I suppose it leaves me somewhere in the middle, not knowing which way to turn, because my natural constituency has been poisoned by people like you, and I can't tell you how much I resent that. Actually, I probably could, but it might take a while. Some of you even stoop so low as to try and associate me with an organisation called the BNP, or the British National Party, when everybody who's seen my videos knows full well that my argument is with religion and has got nothing at all to do with race. And I believe the BNP has a racial agenda and is therefore a racist party. So I would rather vote for nobody at all. In fact, I'd rather drive a garden fork through my own foot than vote for the BNP. But this video is not about them. It's not about right-wing fascists. It's about the left-wing kind. And I think the word racist deserves a public apology for the way it's been hijacked and abused by you multicultural pimps, along with another public apology for all the victims of genuine racism, the people who have actually suffered because of the colour of their skin or where they happen to come from, and who can see that word being devalued every time one of you liars uses it to defend a religion and a fascist religion religion at that. Race is irrelevant. We're all one race. That's obvious to anybody with half a brain. We're all part of the same organism. But we're not all one religion, are we? And we're not all one culture. And the truth is, and this is the truth, whether you clowns want to hear it or not, that many people in the West feel that we are being invaded, yes, that's the word, invaded, by a religion and a culture whose values we totally reject. Not because we're racists, but because the values themselves are degrading and offensive. The whole point of female concealment in Islamic society is that men are not expected to take responsibility for their sexual urges. So any woman who is not covered up from head to toe is asking to be raped. The burqa, therefore, legitimises rape. It apologises for rape. It justifies rape. Are you listening, feminists? And this makes it, in my opinion, as offensive a public statement as a Ku Klux Klan uniform or a Nazi swastika, and I think it should be treated with exactly the same revulsion and contempt. 
And as for the free choice argument that you like to defend so disingenuously, well, walking around naked is a free choice. Wearing a ski mask into a bank is a free choice, but in neither case would you get away with it for very long. This so-called choice to wear the burqa is exercised more here in the West than it is in Muslim countries, because here it's being used quite deliberately as a weapon of cultural jihad, in a naked attempt, if you'll pardon the expression, to undermine the most fundamental of our values, that every human being is born equal. In Islam, as you may have noticed, every human being is not born equal, not by a long way. And this does present us with a problem in the liberal West. The solution to which is not that we should show how reasonable and tolerant we are by compromising our principles, effectively turning them inside out so as not to cause offence. No, the solution is for Muslim men to start treating women as equals and not as possessions. That's the only solution. It's not negotiable and saying so doesn't make anybody a racist. Sorry. As for Islamophobia, well, just because somebody offends you with their opinion, it doesn't give you the right to saddle them with a clinical condition. There is no such thing as Islamophobia. It simply doesn't exist. And most people now realise just what a cynical, manipulative lie that word really is. Suspicion of or dislike of Islam is not a phobia. It's an honest, healthy reaction to the evidence that's been provided. But although Islamophobia doesn't exist, I'll tell you what does exist in great abundance, and that's Islamo-nausea in people who are absolutely sick of Islam and its multicultural apologists. And let's not forget Islamophobia nausea. This is nausea brought on by constantly hearing the word Islamophobia. In fact, I've got to stop saying Islamophobia now because I'm already beginning to feel queasy. These words are being used quite shamelessly to try and engineer an artificial sense of guilt in Western society to redefine our values as prejudices and to silence legitimate opinion and the free exchange of ideas that have made us what we are and that have given us our strength. And that's why this is damaging our society in a fundamental way and it has got to stop. All over the Western world, we've become so intimidated into watching every word and thought in case it might offend somebody's precious faith. It's as if the free world has forgotten to inhale. What happened to our birthright? We need to take a deep breath. We need to get the oxygen of freedom flowing through our veins again and through our brains again and get things back in perspective. We have nothing to apologise for and nothing to feel guilty about. And our way of life, despite its many faults, of which we're all very well aware, thank you, is still far, far superior to anything that Islam has to offer or will ever have to offer, especially if you're female or Jewish or homosexual or even just a common or garden blasphemer like me. That is the truth. And most people in the Western world realise it's the truth and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them saying so as loudly and as often as they like. And you lefty, liberal, multicultural appeasement monkeys, you're not going to like it and you're certainly not going to want to speak out for the values that give you the freedom to be the useful idiots you are. But if you could at least find it in your miserable, frightened little hearts not to slander those of us who do as racists, we'd all be very grateful. Peace.